house, kind of. He's troubleshooting his camera hookup, and um, hopefully he'll be with us here soon. You're, you, you may be hearing him soon, uh, but he's playing around with his camera to try to get everything working properly. So hopefully he will be in the house shortly. And I'm going to try to um, pull you all up here so that I can make sure that I'm on top of your comments. There we go. There's the live stream. Okay. And, um, and this will give folks a little bit of time to come in. We'll probably trim this part off of the video um, for those that watch later. And by the way, we do always leave these unmonetized for at least the first 48 hours so that folks that come in that are subscribers and watch don't have to put up with those irritating ads. I don't get why YouTubers monetize their video. In the first four, four, 24 hours or so, you're not going to make diddly squat in the way of money. I don't care if you get 5,000 views on the video. I mean, you, you don't make diddly on 5,000 views. So I don't know why they bother to monetize for the first day or so why they don't hold off on that and just do it later so that that way the and then the folks that watch later which is how you generally make your money uh, they can pay they can pay the freight so that's um, name of that tune while we're waiting for Steve to come in I'm gonna cut to uh, the uh, side shot of the Grand Seiko stunner that I bought from Little Treasury Jewelers and there it is with the second hand just kind of marching around. And I don't bother to clean the watch up when I put it on the bench. I just took it off my, <coughs> excuse me, just took it off my, uh, my wrist and um, just put it on there. I just kind of wipe off the crystal a little bit with a microfiber cloth, but I don't clean it up and detail it and all that because I wear the watch all the time. So as you may or may not know, I buy these watches to wear them so that's the deal on that. Um, let's see here. R. Wags is in the house. Hey, Craig and Steve. Ray's in the house. Scene's in the house. Steve is still working on getting in here. He just left the um, hangout, and he's coming back in. I don't know if he's restarting his computer to try to get the camera to handshake, um, but I'll try to call him on his cell phone to try to get an update on what's going on here. Oh, he's, he's coming back in. I see him in the hangout. Steve? Craig, I'm not hearing you. Okay, I can hear you. Cannot hear. I can hear you fine. Oh, there, he's got the G-Shock up. Okay. I'm going to call Steve on the phone so that he knows that I can hear him. Let's see here. This is what live TV is all about, folks. It's this type of exciting stuff. Let's put this uh, G-Shock up on the... Uh, Hello? Oh, it's, uh, it is on. Hey, Steve? Hey, Steve? Yes. yes. Since you can't you hear can't me... Hear. Uh, first of all, I don't know why you can't hear me. Uh, you, you might need to turn the volume up on your computer. It is all the way up. Okay, so I, I don't... I can't imagine I can, I can why... Listen, I can listen to you on the phone. Okay, so... So we've got the G-Shock up. Let's see now. How can we get rid of the echoes? Um, what I'll do is I'll, I'll turn the volume down on my phone so that when you talk, I just hear you through the... Um, okay, great. So you can hear me through the phone, correct? Uh, yeah, perfectly. Yeah. Okay, so um, I'm getting a little bit of an echo, though, but... That's all right. I, I'm not going to be talking that much, so you're going to be doing the, most of the talking. So you do know that you do know that we're seeing all your camera data. Okay. Great. ISO 3200, all that stuff. Yeah, I'll try to turn that off. Uh, I'm happy to showing it all right now. We're having our snafu here, and it's supposed to be off. And let's see what happens. Still yeah, it's, shower. Yeah, it's, didn't show the last time. Can okay. we live with that? Yeah, we can troubleshoot that next time. Okay, um, okay so talk about uh, talk about what you've got up the screen on the screen right now. This is Steve from Little Treasury Jewelers. 
Yeah, hi everybody. Um, in the past, I've, we've talked pretty much about Grand Seiko, and uh, today I'd like to sort of take you on a partial tour through our uh, eclectic uh, collection and maybe pull together a couple of threads and want to gauge your interest in some of the brands that we carry and uh, maybe give you a few anecdotes and uh, uh, engage you with that. So um, I thought it'd be interesting to put up this uh, G-Shock. Uh, it's the GMWB 5000D. And this came out uh, as a uh, limited production last spring and it created sort of a, uh, at least for us, a riot of people who were uh, trying to get this watch. And we accepted uh, many orders and people waited uh, months. And we finally uh, have uh, gotten enough uh, just in the last week or so. And it's it's called the Full Metal. Uh, probably a lot of you know it. And uh, it's uh, uh, a recreation of uh, the first G-Shock. And it's it's really neat. Uh, it retails for five fifty, and uh, a beautiful piece. I may uh, add this to my collection as well. So I wonder if, what's uh, the bracelet uh, bracelet like on it. Uh, it's it's really nice. Uh, it's a pretty uh, substantial piece, and uh, as you can see, it's uh, well put together, and it has none of the weight of the typical uh, G Shock. This is really uh, full metal as they call it so so it's uh, fairly really solid yeah and there are other it's very solid is the point mm -hmm. and uh there are other models in uh, all gold and with uh, a black screen uh, instead of the white background screen uh, but this is the original one that sort of created the uh, uh almost riot over uh, getting them people were getting desperate uh, for a while there so uh, anyway here it is now back in stock and wondering if anyone is a G-Shock fan. Pretty cool. Pretty cool, Pretty cool watch. Yep. Okay. So thought I'd bring out another one uh, to show the other end of the G-Shock collection that we have. Uh, we do carry uh, the MRG uh, collection, which is the high end of the G-Shock. And this particular piece uh, has a hammered bezel, uh, hand hammered in Japan, uh, representing uh, the uh, sword hilt on the samurai swords using the same technique. Uh, it's a pretty cool piece. It's titanium with a DLC finish um, and uh, priced accordingly at uh, $5,000. Wow. So, uh, that's pretty so heavy duty. G-Shock has the other end of um, higher end collectibles, uh, MRG. Okay, and we're one of the dealers. Mm -hmm. That's a heavy duty yeah, looking piece. Looking. Yeah, it is. But it's a little lighter than you might think because it is titanium. Mm -hmm. And now that you said it has a coating on it, does that is that so it doesn't scratch? DLC diamond like carbon. Yeah, very hard. Uh, amorphous carbon, whereas diamond is crystalline. There you go. You want to see these special watches, Little Treasury Jewelers, littletreasury.com is his website, littletreasury.com. So I'm going to switch gears. Uh, I want to just introduce a new model from a, uh, a very niche company that we carry here. Uh, it's our local watch company. Uh, Towson Watch Company, and it's from Towson, Maryland. And this is a, uh, a GMT. It's called the Norther uh, a GMT. If you know how to uh, uh, set up everything and orient toward the sun, will allow you to determine uh, north. And uh, don't ask me to do it here. I don't have any sun, but uh, that's uh, the source of the name. Uh, very nice piece, and uh, there's a similar piece uh, that they made last year, a chronograph of the same dial colors, and the dial colors come from a cockpit instrument uh, in the uh, uh, one of the planes made here in uh, Maryland during World War II. 
And so a lot of the Towson Watch Company pieces uh, reference local things such as the Chesapeake Bay or uh, things that have been uh, made here uh, in Maryland. So a uh, pretty nice piece, uh, 42 millimeters and uh, nicely decorated movement. And this piece is number eight of, uh, I believe it's number eight, yeah, of 100 pieces. Well, there you go. And so, folks, just so you know, littletreasury.com is the website, and Steve has about 20 brands that he, that he uh, represents. So there you are. So he's just showing a few here today. And we, we are having some low-level technical difficulties, so our audio is a little bit sketchy, but we're doing the best we can, and uh, hopefully we'll, we'll get it together here pretty soon so that you, you will be able to expect the normal stellar quality. Yeah, we apologize for that. Okay, the next piece, I'm switching over to another one of our uh, somewhat niche brands. And this is uh, from uh, Vermont Watch Company. And if you're not familiar with it, this is, uh, they're made in the UK in England, uh, in Henley. And this is a limited edition piece from uh, this past year. And it is called the Supersonic. Vermont is very involved with uh, aircraft themes. Uh, the two brothers that founded it, Nick and Giles English, are pilots and have done uh, some interesting things, restoring planes, flying them, and uh, they're pretty much uh, daredevil types. And uh, so this is a commemorative uh, of the Concord plane and uh, discontinued, of course, but this is a new piece, one of their annual uh, commemorative uh, pieces. And uh, it's interesting in that it departs from a lot of their uh, design uh, uh, features from prior watches. This is the first piece with a power reserve indicator up at the top and the first piece with a small second. Okay. And now what, who makes their movements? Uh, well, that's an interesting question. And I'm going to turn over and let you see the movement. Um, as you can see, it's rather beautiful. And Craig, can you figure out what uh, the symbolism is in that? Not really. Not really. Okay, so I said this commemorates the Concord. Oh, okay, I see it there. Yeah, I can yeah, see it there now. The Concord in the movement. And uh, so, beautiful piece. This is a, uh, a manual wine. It's also their first manual wine that they were produced. And it has an eight-day power reserve. Now, the movement is made for them to their specifications by La Joux Pere in uh, Chateau de Vaughan, uh, Switzerland. Steve, do you, we're getting some complaints about the audio. Do you have a headset that you can use with your phone so that it's not, you have it on the speakerphone, I guess? Um, yeah. Do you have any kind of earbuds or anything you can well, use Andy, to isolate? I'll move the phone away. Does that help? Well, we'll see. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, really sorry about the uh, production issues. Uh, had a, a very full day and not a lot of time to prepare this time. So, okay. So, is that okay now? A little better? Well, they'll let us know in the chat. I, I, it, yeah. I can't tell. Okay. So, um, this is a limited piece. And... Um, I'm going to show you a uh, another variation. And this is the piece in 18 karat gold. Uh, very beautiful. And this is a limited edition of 100 pieces. So to answer your question, back on the movement, uh, 
La Joux Pere is the um, uh, the manufacturer, uh, sort of a, a bespoke movement, and La Joux Pere is now a I'm looking for a watch. Johnny, Johnny, you saw Johnny Utah says lighting isn't the best. So here's the deal, Johnny. This was just thrown together, uh, and um, Steve is still trying to work out the issues with his um, his setup there. Hopefully, we'll work through it, and um, he's planning on uh, some stellar production quality uh, for some future broadcasts. But it isn't going to happen today. But we're doing the best we can. Oh, can, can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you fine. Okay. So, uh, Citizen uh, has, from Japan, obviously, has acquired um, Le Joux Pere and some other uh, movement makers. And uh, so that is uh, ultimately uh, a movement uh, that sort of is sourced now from uh, Citizen Watch Company, ultimately. Uh, now, story, Steve, think. do you think you should go to manual focus on, are you on autofocus on the camera? Maybe you should okay. manually focus at a particular distance and that way we can be consistent. Um, it just, it was, seemed like it was hunting a little bit. Oh, now it's showing the peaking. No, so you can't do that. You're going to have to switch it back. Yeah. We're going to have to get you a Sony camera, get you a real camera. Okay. We're, we're going to, Steve's going to spend some money. <laughs> we're going to, he's going to have a full blown no, I, no, studio. No, I can't hear you, Greg. Um, I don't know why not. Uh, can you hear me now? Yes, I can. Okay. So, okay. So, uh, now I'm segueing into uh, a little bit of the Citizen collection, and while you're doing that, a Blazon Mark One says, "Craig, will 20 BTC create life-changing wealth?" It very well might. That's a that's a might. If if Bitcoin takes off and becomes a world reserve currency, I, I, my guess is it will. I uh, I would hold on to it if you got it. I'm holding mine. I'm not selling mine. I'll put it that way. And I've got more than that. Hard, hard to hear you again. Sorry about that. Go ahead, Steve. Okay. So uh, this is a little citizen watch that's gotten uh, a little bit of play. There is sort of a, a very nice article in Hodinkee about this being uh, a wonderful, affordable daily wear. And it's actually a cool little piece. If you like a green watch, and uh, I happen to, so very nice piece, uh, 450, I think, and uh, solar powered. Is that titanium? No, I don't okay. think so. Uh, movement. So, they want a movement shot on the citizen. I can't hear you. Uh, they want a movement shot on the citizen. Okay. No movement to see. But case back. It's the movement. So you just have the case back here. So, um,. Clive, the watch wrangler, asked, Craig, is 20 BTC enough to buy respectability for a classless Russian? Uh, he says no, but no, I, I think it would probably do the trick uh, 10 years from now. 10 years from now, 20 BTC is probably going to be a big deal. Okay, here's uh, another citizen. This is uh, the latest uh, iteration of their satellite wave series. And uh, pretty uh, decorative piece with a lot of functionality, world time, and obviously solar powered. And just 
I, we have a question for you, Steve, if you can hear me. Uh, um, will will you be carrying the new quartz citizen that's supposed to have an almost three thousand dollar MSRP? Uh, yeah, we we carry all of the uh, the higher end ones, and usually we sell them pretty quickly. Okay. Yeah. And he asked, what sort of discount can be expected? Don't, we don't talk discounts on these shows. You're going to have to call Steve and talk directly to him and. If you're a serious buyer, he'll talk turkey with you. Yeah, I, I think the answer is we're competitive. There you go. So, yeah. Okay. So, pretty neat piece. Uh, uh, there's always someone who's looking for this and uh, just came in. Okay, moving on. Why is Steve not talking about GS? Do you Are you going to talk about some later? Some Grand Seikos or not? Know. They're just asking why you're not talking about Grand Seikos. I'm just mixing it up a bit. Yeah. Uh, I'm trying to express some of the uh, uh, breadth of our collection. And uh, we can always talk Grand Seiko, but uh, that will be a better discussion when I return from Basel World uh, at the end of March. Uh, and I can discuss everything that's new. And once we get your camera situation all straightened out, because they the the Grand Seiko stunners deserve stellar camera they deserve, work. They deserve better. We have to apologize for this uh, production. So, um, moving over, I wanted to introduce uh, another brand that we carry here in the store, and this is Frederick Constant, uh, which is uh, has been recently acquired by Citizen Watch Company. And uh, it is, uh, they're made in Geneva and uh, billed as affordable luxury and they make a very nice watch at a very competitive price. This is their world timer, which has actually received quite a bit, a bit of acclaim. And uh, it has the uh, internal uh, rota counter rotating date function, if you can see that. Um, and uh, which has been featured in some much more expensive watches than this piece. And this is uh, an in-house movement and uh, a good portion of their line are uh, in-house. That looks like and, a gold rotor. Uh, I, it, it's not gold, it's gold colored or gold plated, but okay. it's not solid gold um, at this price point and it's doing quite a bit of reflection. So they have quite a few in-house movements at a very affordable price. So it's an interesting company. They've figured out uh, technological solutions to um, manufacture their own movements uh, efficiently. And uh, so they are the affordable luxury brand. Okay, so again, uh, now and so, what what what's the list price on that watch? Just to give us a benchmark. This this watch is uh, forty one hundred and ninety five dollars. There you go. And there are many that come in in the uh, two thousand dollar range and even uh, below as well. So this is one of the uh, higher end uh, pieces in that line. Okay. So, finally, I wanted to show uh, a piece from another brand that we carry, which is Atelier de Monaco. And Atelier de Monaco is a spin-off from Frederick Constant. And this brand was established, interestingly, uh, when the chief watch designer of Alexander, of rather of Frederick Constant, uh, was given leeway to develop uh, whatever he wanted, and his first uh, piece was a uh, uh, a uh, tourbillon uh, minute repeater, and they decided that well, this can't be affordable luxury, obviously, and they created the brand. Uh, Initially in Monaco, they were produced, uh, Atelier de Monaco. 
and uh, in recent years they've uh, relocated to um, uh, Geneva where they're co-located with Frederick Constant and these are all in-house movements and this is an 18 karat gold uh, flyback chronograph uh, gorgeous piece they make uh, 88 of any model that's uh, the limit uh, self-imposed and I love that crown yeah beautiful uh, engraved uh, 22 karat gold rotor uh, they're actually just gorgeous watches and uh, very limited we happen to be the first uh, retailer for the brand in uh, North America actually in, uh, in the Americas North and South America and uh, the designer and now CEO uh, visits our store every year his name is uh, Tim Kozlog he's a young man and uh, he's a genius watch designer and uh, those of you who are in the area when we have uh, him in I urge you to come in and uh, take a look uh, so flyback chronograph by Atelier there you go Monica. folks you want something unique you want something high-end there you go right there unique yeah. and high-end in one package in one 18 karat yeah, so gold package we also um, carry some tourbillons from them and uh, uh, world timers uh, beautiful exclusive brand and uh, again uh, Atelier de Monaco as with Frederick Constant owned by uh, Citizen Watch and if we hark back to the Vermont watch with the uh, 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 Le Jus Pere movement in it uh, also sort of ties back into it so uh, we're seeing interesting uh, uh, nexus of connections between uh, Japan and uh, Switzerland right now. Um, you know, what, what is Citizen doing with uh, these Swiss investments? Um, it's uh, a pretty interesting situation for, from our standpoint. And we've had these brands before all the mergers, and so we're experiencing a lot of the uh, institutional uh, changes and adjustments along with them. I thought it was a fairly interesting uh, perspective. Okay, so uh, that's the watches I have to show. If I can, I'll sort why of don't we back. switch you back, um, yeah. uh, Steve? Why don't we switch you back to um, your other camera so they can see you? Yeah. Okay. Um, we still see the we still see the uh, the macro shot. You want to see the macro shot? No, no. I, I want you to switch back to your other camera so they can see you. Uh, the Logitech. Okay. Yep. Here. <clears throat> okay. As of now, we're still seeing the uh, macro shot in the Hangout. Meantime, I'll show my Grand Seiko Stunner. Oh, there, there we, we go. go. We got you back now. Okay. So now Excellent. we got Steve back on camera. And um, so I don't know why we're having these audio issues. The Hangout should. Do, do you have it? Do you have me muted or something? Or? No, I don't. Look. And, uh, so it's a mystery to me. And uh, got to apologize to everybody who can't uh, hear us too well or and like, if, for example, if you watched a YouTube video on that particular computer, you'd hear the audio. So you. I'm not hearing you. So. So, so you know that that computer actually has audio. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, like, you could watch a YouTube video and it would work. Uh, that's a good question. Let's try it again. So I uh, testing uh, one, t testing one I two, just testing got one, you. testing one two. I Yep, I got you now. Okay, so okay. we can turn off the phone. We can. So, turns out, um, in shuffling the watches for the show, it turned down. Go ahead, and, yeah. Just you hung up. Speed. You hung up the phone already. Yes. Okay. Okay. So, a uh, couple of other things. Um, 
we mentioned uh, Vermont Watches. We will be having an event here on March 14th, 5 to 8 p.m. Uh, watches, whiskey watches uh, uh, with uh, Vermont Watches showing their novelty, 2019 novelties, which have just been shown today on their website, which they announced in England. And we'll be seeing them next week in New York at their townhouse event. Uh, and we will be having all the prototypes here uh, for the event for those who are local and uh, want to come in. Eastward, East, Eastwood Tillman asked, what is the address of your shop and do you carry Breitling and Oris? Um, we carry Oris and not Breitling. And our, we are... Uh, but you carry Omega. Omega. Yes. We are in Gambrels, Maryland, and the uh, street address, 2506 New Market Lane, Gambrels, 21054, Maryland. And another question, Steve, what's the most asked about watch in your store? Right now, uh, the specific asked about watch would be the uh, Grand Seiko Snowflake. Okay. Um... Well, this is an appropriate comment. It's like watching two geriatric patients figuring out how to use a remote to change the channel. Well, there you go. Well, the, uh, <laughs> the last, last show was like two old fishermen. Yeah. So, um, don't diss us geriatric types. So, there must, be a, must be a law for about that. Yeah, we are slow learners, but we'll, we'll keep at it. Um, let's see. Does Steve carry MVMT Spinnaker? No. Okay. Um, there's a question about the oyster quartz. That's probably three years. They asked how often he has to switch the battery in that. My guess is three years. Uh, what is your website? LittleTreasury.com. LittleTreasury.com is his website. Does Steve carry Squale? S-Q-U-A-L-E. No. Okay. Maybe you should run down the list of the brands you do carry. Okay, uh, we have obviously Grand Seiko, Seiko Presage. Uh, we have uh, uh, the uh, Prospects line, the dive watches from uh, Seiko. We have Nomos German watches. We have uh, Alexander Sharikov, also German, Mula Glashuta, Meister Singer. Uh, we mentioned uh, Atelier de Monaco. Uh, Fremont, Omega, uh, Towson Watch Company, uh, Kendall Watches, very rarely seen, very interesting pieces, um, Aris, Long Jeans, Frederick Constant, uh, G-Shock, Citizen, and uh, Orion, Microbrand, and probably a few other, oh, Parallel. Couple of quick questions, Steve. Um, can you can we see a snowflake? Uh, Steve, are you taking pre-orders for the three two one Speedy? Yes. Um, and Howdy from Texas says the snowflake having pins on the links is the biggest disgrace. Let me address that. Um, the the pins and pipes, as they call them is actually a better solution for a bracelet. It causes less wear on the links because it can it can free wheel. And so recently Rolex on on their high end date eight and so forth has a sleeve, a ceramic sleeve so that it can rotate on its axis and, and reduce wear. So the pins and the collars does that for you. Whereas if you have a screw going through that's fixed then the, the, the uh, link is rotating on that screw, and that will cause more wear. So a lot of high-end watches, including a lot of uh, Pat, Patek Philippe watches, have pins and sleeves or pins and collars, whatever term they use for it, because it actually is a better solution. People do complain that it's harder to, to resize them and, and take the pin out and so on, but once it's in, it's a better solution for a bracelet. So, uh, just like everything, everything's trade-offs. Um, so, that's the deal with that. Um, 
Do you have any used Rolexes? I know you're not a Rolex AD. Somebody asked, how's your Rolex stock? Do you have any used Rolexes? Uh, yeah, we have a uh, Sea Dweller. We have uh, a nice uh, uh, sub date. We've got a, a couple of vintage pieces, uh, incoming Explorer 1 uh, next end of the week. Mm -hmm. So it, it changes all the time, and uh, yeah, we carry them. Okay. And they asked, "Do you wet shave?" Oh, your your <laughs> camera your camera just went black. No, I'm just... trying to get over to the uh, the other one and show the uh, snowflake. Oh, okay. If I can get it to take the your frame. time, take your time. Um, okay. Do the ball watches sell? Ball B A L L. Oh, okay. I'm glad. Uh, Someone mentioned that, and I need to get back so I can see what's going on here. Um, they do sell, and um, Ball had been sort of out of our orbit a bit uh, with some changes in their distribution, and we've always been a very strong Ball dealer for years. It was my first watch line, and we... Uh, are uh, getting back abo on board with them and uh, pretty much can we're just loading on a website uh, everything so uh, yeah and somebody I, just commented that your omegas aren't on the website so folks uh, don't count on their website being up to date uh, best bet is to call Steve with whatever model that you want because he's probably going to have it and it's probably not going to be updated on the website yeah, actually all uh, Omegas are on the website. It links into their feed, and it takes a bit to crank it up when you go to the page. Yeah, so so there's another question here. What self-defense weapon does Steve carry? And I can address that. Um, he has a, a cadre of, of security staff that are with him at all times, so um, he doesn't really need to, to carry anything himself. Uh, when he came here, he had um, quite a quite a security uh, detail so that's the name of that tune and that's a personal question exactly yeah. um this is the snowflake obviously i'm jiggling in front of the camera yeah let's switch back to your camera because uh to you because that macro is just not not getting the job done that yep. that grand seiko is a lot more attractive than what we're seeing on that yeah, camera we're getting shot. a lot of yellow balance out of that aren't yeah we? It's just not just not working. Um, let's see here. Uh, resale on these brands. See, here's the thing. Um, like I've said before, don't count on watches being investments, folks. That's just just the deal. Buy them and enjoy them. Uh, let's see here. Um, <laughs> CNN has snowflakes. <laughs> Oh, well. Um, yeah, he's got some Rolexes in stock, so get in touch with him if you want to buy one of those from him. He gives good deals. Um, Steve looks like he can handle himself. Absolutely he can. Yep, he's a tough, tough character. Um, Uh, Johnny Utah says, um, my attire is more of a fall look. Okay, well, there you go. Um, down under, is it fall? They're reverse of us, right? It's fall down there, right, in Australia? So pretend I'm in Australia. Um, I think that's how that works. What's the scoop on your Submariner date for sale, Steve? Scoop? Yep. Okay, it's a uh, pretty new model. I think it's 2014. 2014 in pristine condition, box and papers. What, you said it's a 2014? I believe, yeah. Wait, that's pre-ceramic, isn't it? 2015 was ceramic? When did the ceramic come out? It's ceramic. It's ceramic. I think it's 2000. Okay. So, what are you asking for it? 9200. 9200. There you go, folks. 
You want a Submariner date? What's the condition of it? Excellent. There you go. Box and papers, right? Everything. There you go, folks. Complain you can't get a Submariner date. Here you go. Let's see. Alt 1C, black. It's my daily wear. Because it's because it doesn't scratch, right? Yeah, and it also looks good. I like it. Okay. Um, uh, let's see. Do you have used ball watches? Uh, a couple. There you go. Maybe four, four or five. Gold Daytona versus Steel Royal Oak. Uh, I would say go with the Gold Daytona. I wouldn't have a Steel Royal Oak on a bet. Uh, no, it's summer at Craig. Well, it's the seasons are reversed down there, folks. So if we're coming into spring here, you'd be coming into fall there. Okay. So if you say my, my jacket is like a fall look, then, then I'm good for down under. Right? So there's that. Uh, let's see here. Steve, I'm going to need a full Windsor with a wide collar. <laughs> look, I, I, someone made that comment before. I was brought up that full Windsors were not worn by gentlemen. So I did kind of half Windsor this time. There you go. Okay. So, you get. so you get. does Steve ex accept Bitcoin as payment? We'll have to talk about it. He, he's he's working on it. Cowgirls yep. Live, Sarah accepts it. Brad from Tech Webcast Down Under accepts it. But Steve is lagging behind a little bit. Oh, I accept it, of course. Mm -hmm. How many years has Steve been in the business? Uh since 2004. There you go. One of my many careers. There you go. Summer going into fall. That's correct. They're reverse of us. And this guy, and somebody says, not reversed, more like six months ahead. <laughs> They're exactly reverse of us. Their seasons are exactly reversed. It's not rocket science, folks. Um, let's see. Why does Steve not mention Rolex on brands? He's not a Rolex AD, East, Eastwood. That's not rocket science. He has some used Rolexes, but he's not a Rolex AD. Um, okay. Christmas in July, then Aussies are crazy. Um, wouldn't wear an, a Royal Oak on a bet. That's correct. Um, Steve, have you seen the movie Ghost with Patrick Swayze? No, and why do you ask? I, uh, they don't say why they ask. Um, let's see here. What has Steve seen change since 2004 in the industry? Wow. Just about everything. Life was simple then. And, of course, the <laughs> Internet, uh, online sales, uh, manufacturers getting in, you know, boutiques, online, uh, all of the, now some of the uh, returning to brick and mortar by online. Uh, it's just uh, everything's churning. Here, personnel turning over. Here, uh, here's one that, that um, I can answer. Steve, would you accept a used, like new, GS9F, a year old, with box and papers as trade towards a higher-end GS model? I can say yes, you would. You do accept trades. I do. Absolutely you would. Um, yeah. <laughs> Does Steve accept illegal prescri prescription drugs as payment? I'm holding my Bitcoin. Yeah, I, I seriously doubt you have any Bitcoin, adapt, adaptive Calman or whatever your real name is. Um, so there's that. Um, 
reverse would suggest they go from fall to summer. <laughs> we're still de- <laughs> we're still debating. We're still debating the change of the seasons down under. I'll ask Brad. I'm on his his podcast this weekend. I'm on his uh, tech news tech webcast podcast this weekend. So I'll ask him. Um, all right. Anything else? Um, what do you think? Are we about to wrap it up? Anything else, Steve? No, that's it. Um, stay tuned for what's uh, coming out in Basel. Uh, as I said, I'm going, and I'll bring back as much information as I can. If anybody has some things they want to uh, track down, uh, let me know. Pop me an email, steve at littletreasury.com. All right, and it looks like I just got a warning on the thing that our, our broadcast was interrupted, so um, so that's interesting. Well, I don't know when that happened. Maybe it just happened because I, I was still on the comments. All right, well, anyway, that was a disaster. <laughs> we're, <laughs> we're wrapped. Um, yep. Yeah, we got to figure out how to get your camera to not show all that stuff on the mm-hmm. screen. Get a clean HDMI. And also, you might want to do like I do and lock down the, the watch. And then, right. and then yeah. you know, that way you can have the focus exact. And, and then, you know, and then switch to the next yeah. watch instead of trying to hold it in the hand because it's like the yeah. focus is like all over the place. Lack, lack of time to set up due to selling too many watches on the floor all day. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. Next time. All right. Um, yeah, there's still 41 people in the chat, and we're not even broadcasting. Really. So, <laughs> Uh-oh. Um, let me. What I'm going to do? I'll let you go. I'm going okay. to um, go back in and see if I can uh, wrap it up and give all your information again, just so that okay. at the end of the video, it'll have all your stuff. All right. So, and if I can't do that, I can't, we'll see what happens, okay. but I'll, I'll let you go. All right. Carry on my friend. See you. Take care. <clears throat> I don't know. Folks, um, you are broadcasting. Okay. So I don't know. I got a warning message on the um, streaming box, the Video Pro, and it acted like it wasn't broadcasting. So anyway, that was a total train wreck. Um, I'm going to work with Steve to try to get a setup. He got a, um, he got a Video Pro. He thought he got a Video Pro streaming box but they sent him a video which is a cheaper unit they tried to rip him off okay and he sent it back and he has not since gotten another one so i was just trying to bring him in via hangout and he's got this the little adapter thing that he can hook up to the computer and try to bring the camera in and it's kind of kludgy and of course he's using a windows machine which is kind of kludgy so um so that was all kind of a total disaster but um hopefully next time hopefully next time we'll do a better job and next time yes we will talk about um we will talk about uh grand seikos a little more and maybe a little more about omegas and because uh yeah i wouldn't buy any of the watches that there's other ones i of course i don't buy what I call no-name watches, I, you know, I just don't buy them, but, um, uh, let's see, um, promise us you'll never have a fire sale of your watches to fly to Singapore. Johnny, I've only got two watches that are worth anything, and they're not worth much, um, so no, I wouldn't fire sale my watches, um, uh, Let's see here. Um, I'm just making sure I didn't miss out on any. I um, uh, didn't miss out on any important comments. 
<laughs> good watch for a woman is a fake watch. They can't tell the difference and it's cheaper. <clears throat> um, I doubt Craig could afford a Royal Oak. Absolutely, I cannot afford a Royal Oak. I mean, that's totally insane. Spend that kind of money on, on a piece of junk that looks ugly. No, I couldn't afford that. Um, uh, let's see. <laughs> I'm Satoshi. Um, uh, let's see. I seriously doubt you have any BTC. Correct. I don't have any BTC. I have no, I have zero BTC. Um... Let's see. Craig, suggestion. You need a more off-the-wall character. Two straight men don't jail. That's why Clive and Archie work as the watch world's Laurel and Hardy. Well, there you go. Um, well, I've had Clive in here before. Um, he's been on the show. So, yeah. I mean, anybody you can suggest that would be good to come on the show, uh, have them get in touch. we got to find somebody with a decent Decent camera and decent audio. So that lets out 90% of them right there, are just wiped right off the face of the earth. I did notice, though, that um, what's his name got a lav mic? Um, the dog man. What's his name? Um, Mark. He got a lav mic. I watched his video recently where he talked about his, um, you know, climbing Mount Everest and how he's like, he's got like the. Um, you know, the pinnacle of watches, and then he showed his watches at the end. Oh, boy. There's maybe one there that I would keep. Um, first of all, he's got a bunch of maxi case Rolexes, and that's just an ugly case. Um, so, and then the steel and gold watch, I mean, he paid 14 grand for that. He could pretty much get a date eight for that price and just have, like, a really fantastic watch so yeah I think that um, I would go a different direction with that whole thing uh, Johnny Utah would be fantastic well there you go let's see Cartier Pasha Chrono on gold with a strap and the flesh looks amazing. Prices don't seem horrible. Buy a, buy a Rolex Date 8 instead. If you want a gold watch, buy, buy the real deal. Buy the real deal. Um, <laughs> but he didn't want a Date 8. Um, if he did, he would have purchased one. Well, just poor judgment, that's all. If you're going to tie up that much money in watches, you might as well have a real real watch I mean steel Rolexes have always been for people that can't afford a gold watch uh, their compromise watch um, pet shop boy I love the maxi case Craig is wrong no Craig is right uh, maxi case is really ugly and unproportional that that would be correct um, Archie won't come on the channel um, What's your thoughts on the Rolex Jubilee bracelet? Absolutely. Full stop. Fantastic bracelet. My first watch was a uh, Datejust with an engine turn bezel. And the Jubilee bracelet that, believe it or not, was made in the USA. And it, it held up fine. It was fine. Ban all the maxi. Hopefully the maxi cases will be replaced with a decent case. Um, they did it on the Pepsi already. They've softened it. They've updated the Pepsi. That, that looks a lot better. So hopefully they'll do the same thing at ba Basel World and they'll get rid of that chunky, ugly case and go back to something that looks decent. When you're paying that much money for a watch, you should get something that looks really good. I mean, look, look how great the cases on the date just and on the date date 
And on the Daytona, for gosh sakes, they all have beautiful cases. Why would you make somebody that buys a sub get something that's not as beautiful? Doesn't make any sense. Um, Slim Blugs on the Pepsi is fake news. Uh, the Pepsi looks a lot better. Look, Go look at it. It looks a lot better than, the, for example, the case on a sub. Um, uh, the, blasphemy, the blasphemy you spew, you, when anybody disagrees with you, it's like, no, it's not. It's not that funny. Um, yeah, and, a, and a lot of people have come out and said that the maxi case is not the way to go. Even Tim, the watchbox, when you see him talk about like the Datejust 41 and he talks about the case and how, how beautiful it flows and all that, and then he, he says this is nothing like the slab-sided maxi case. No, he'll, he'll do some offhanded comments that clearly show that he thinks the, the other cases are better, more attractive. He won't come right out and say it because, you know, he's got to sell both, but he'll imply it strongly. Um, Craig Clive started on Archie's channel, but a following, but a following then went it alone. Uh, just think you need someone to bounce off of me. Absolutely. Well, send them my way. Absolutely. We'll have folks on. I, I, I don't, I'm fine with having folks on. Um, let's see. Craig, ever thought about a beater watch like a Seiko? No, I use my, um, that's my beater watch, my Grand Seiko Diver. It's, it is rugged. It holds up great. That's my beater watch. And then other times I wear the, when I need a dress watch, I wear this 18 karat gold stunner. So I've got the dress watch covered this 18 karat gold stunner and then I've got the um, see how thin that is and then I've got the uh, beater watch covered with this heavy duty piece so I've got it I've got both both use cases covered it's all personal preference, and it's subjective not right or wrong ah no 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 not really the um, maxi case is ugly that's just the way it is. That's objective, not subjective. It just is. Um, sin, S-I-N-N. -N. Uh, no interruption at mine. Yeah, it kept broadcasting. It just gave me a message on the thing. Acted like it wasn't, but it was broadcasting. That's okay. It's, a, it's all what it is. Um, Batman and Pepsi cases are exactly the same. I'm not so sure about that. But in any, in any event, the Pepsi case looks a lot better than the, um, the case on a Submariner. We're talking about comparing it to the Submariner Maxi case. It looks much better. But I'll, I'll look at it in person. If I'm on the list, by the way, if they call me and they have one, I'll go down and look at it. If I don't like it, I won't buy it. But I think it looks a lot better from the videos and all I've seen. I think it looks a lot better than the case on the uh, Submariner. Every man needs a Rolex. There you go. Um, I can come to the, sh the, to the show and display my G-Shock and Sarb Alpinus and discuss push-ups, Bitcoin, and suits with Craig. Well, there you go. Come on in. Absolutely. I just emailed you the link. Come on in. Uh, towards the end, you can see the Pepsi lugs are still maxi as ever. Well, if they are, I won't buy it. I can't reason with the elderly, I suppose. No, you can't. No, you can't reason with old people. Uh, let's see here. Rumor is Rolex is going to increase prices by 10%. Well, there you go. Why not? Um... Where's your Rolex, Craig? I don't have a Rolex right now. I'm just wearing, I, I'm wearing the gold uh, stunner here with the 9F movement, Grand Seiko. And then I've got the um, spring drive diver there, stunner. 
and then I have an Apple Watch, and that's all I have. I actually have some old, um, I don't know what it is. It's in my travel kit, some old Victorian Ox watch or something that I can use, like if I'm traveling somewhere and I think I'm going to get mugged. Um, but that's it. Craig, any stock tips? Buy um, mutual funds with a long track record, with a really good long track record. That's the safest bet. Uh, Rolex can increase their prices. It's still a bubble. Also buy Bitcoin. There you go. Um, Gothic hands don't belong on diver. These hands look great. It looks a lot better in person than it does on a macro shot like that. And that's the case with a lot of watches. A lot of watches, it's best to see them in person. But, um, yeah, they look fantastic. They're brushed titanium. So they'll sit there for a thousand years and, and look great. Um, titanium is, is highly resistant to, um, to uh, any kind of corrosion, more so than even 18-karat uh, white gold. Super, super corrosion resistant. Um, so there's all that. Um, let's see. That's about it. I don't know what else we can, um, what other of the world's problems that we can solve. Uh I'll work with Steve and see if he can get the quality on his end, um, you know, worked out by Roth IRS. <laughs> Roth IRA. Yeah, but you still got to put the money in something. Once you put it in the IRA, you got to invest it in something. So maybe some, um, some mutual funds with long, good, solid track records. Love the smoothness of the second hand. Well, yeah, it's freaking amazing. And it's dead on accurate. After four months, it's like within three and a half seconds. It's like a second a month uh, accurate. That works for me. It's extremely rugged. Looks great on the wrist. Very comfortable on wrist. That's... One of my biggest things is the comfort on wrist, because I actually wear my watches. Can you imagine that? I actually wear and use them. Uh, sold all yellow gold Omegas are stunning. Some of the Omegas look pretty good. I, some of them not so great. Uh, you have to be really selective on the Omegas. Some of them look pretty good, but... Be selected. Papa John's or Domino's? Good question. All right. Well, I think I'm going to wrap it. We're not really making much progress here. Um, by the way, uh, I don't know if... Um, Are, are the indices on the GS die rate here at White Gold? I don't think so. I don't know what they are. Maybe somebody can uh, can research that. I don't think they are. But I don't know if they're titanium. I don't know what they are. That's a really good question. And I haven't really found that answer anywhere. I've looked at, for it before. Um, less than a cent for a transaction and 5% discount. I don't know what that means. Um, James Bond Aquaterra looks amazing. Well, there you go. Um, what's for dinner, Craig? Our wags. Oh, by the way, our wags. Man, don't, don't hammer Sarah on the cost of having horses, for gosh sakes. <laughs> Please. I mean, she's an 18-year-old girl i mean she's racing barrel races and all that i mean obviously you know there's some wealth in her family okay so don't we don't have to rub in the fact that it's expensive to have horses everybody knows horses are expensive okay especially when you have like five of them so um i don't think we need to literally beat that dead horse right um 
If you can, if you've got horses, okay, then you've got money. <laughs> That's the name of that tune. And if you don't, if you don't, you won't have it at the end of the day. Here's the thing: a friend of mine who had a number of horses and had some race horses and so on. He said, "You know how to make a a small fortune in horses." And I said, no, how do you make a small fortune in horses? He says, start with a large fortune. So that's the deal with horses. Yes, they're expensive. Um, sweet potato, there you go. Sweet potato time. Uh, I can't watch Sarah. No talk about Bitcoiners. Yes, she talked about Bitcoin yesterday on the show. Yes, she did. Um, and she showed some watches on the show yesterday. You didn't watch. You didn't pay attention. I just had mashed sweet potatoes with some butter and brown sugar. Well, there you go. Mashed potatoes, are, I mean, um, sweet potatoes are very nutritious. They are very nutritious. All right, well, we're going to wrap this puppy up. And... Um, Let's see here. Whoops. Uh, what did she say about Bitcoin? She said that she's holding it with a strong hand. She said that you can donate it to her, first of all. And then she said she's holding her Bitcoin. She's not going to sell it. And she said that, and as far as watches, she showed some uh, watches on, uh, she showed Steve what, Steve's website. And then she showed some watches, and she also showed some engagement rings that she liked. She said she's not planning on getting married right now, but she is. Um, she did show off some of the uh, engagement rings, like the Tiffany lamp in the back. Cannot see it clearly because, but it seems nice. Yeah, it's pretty nice. It's pretty nice. Pretty nice lamp. Yeah. Um, got it. Bless her heart. She's so talented for an 18. -year -old. Yeah, and here's the thing, our wags. She's in motion. She's making things happen. I mean, how many 18-year-old kids are out there competitively racing horses, doing her own show, building her own brand, acquiring Bitcoin? I mean, you know, the answer to that question is probably one, Sarah. <laughs> you know, she's so far ahead of her contemporaries, it's not funny. And here's the thing. She's going to be wealthy because if she keeps acquiring Bitcoin, can you imagine when she's like 40 years old, how wealthy she's going to be? Um, she's not super famous and charisma, char charismatic like Craig. She's a lot more charismatic than me. She's got presence. She's got what they call in the business, she's got presence. Yeah, she's a talent. Um like, uh, what's his name would say, um, uh, the Berkshire Hathaway guy, Hathaway guy um, Warren Buffett. Like he would say, uh, I'd love to buy 10% of her future earnings. You know, he goes and he gives like commencement addresses and stuff for people and, and you know, that are graduating from like Harvard or something like that. And like, I'll buy, you know. I'll buy 10% of your earnings for, you know, 100 grand or whatever, right? Because he knows they're going to be real successful. So um, that would be a good buy to um, Warren Buffett hates Bitcoin. Well, yeah, he, da oh my gosh, he's in the banking business. <laughs> he's got tremendous holdings in banks. <laughs> of course he's against Bitcoin. But secretly, probably behind the scenes, he's probably buying up, like, huge <laughs> quantities of it, <laughs> you know? Um so, uh, so there's that. All right. Well, hey, we once again we've solved all the world's problems, and so we're going to stop the broadcast and kind of go on from there. So, complete event. Thank you guys for watching. Hey, pound that like button and pound the little bell, the little bell, and we will see you guys next time. <laughs>